Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our uh, session here with Dr. Lisa Platero Brown. Yes, you got it? Okay. Um, my name is Felica Ahasian Bryant. I'm the director of the Native American Educational Culture Center at Purdue University, and we're very pleased to <clears throat> host this session. We have a cooking session, cooking demonstration with uh, Dr. Lisa Platero Brown. And um, welcome back again for those of you who join us for our first session. We, it was such a great success. We are offering a second session. This one is more so related to preparing uh, some dishes for the holiday, um, upcoming holiday. And um, we have two items that we're going to be preparing today. And so I'm going to go ahead and let Lisa get started, just given that we, we got started a little bit late due to some tech issues. So I appreciate your patience. And we will go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and officially turn it over to Lisa. So thank you again for joining us and we'll have you get started with your cooking demo. Yes, hi, Yate, everyone. Welcome to my home. Um, thank you again, Celica, Purdue University's Native American Educational Cultural Center. I am excited. I've been waiting. Um, I couldn't wait for this day to come and it's finally here. So thank you all for joining us. Um, I will introduce myself in my Navajo language. Yat is Elisa Platero Brown Yenishiet, Twitik Onjanishle, Twitik Ini Bashish Chin, Hatsoi Dashinela, Geshine Deshiche. Thank you so much for joining us. This is my home kitchen. We have a different angle this time. I'm going to be using my stovetop today. Um, and like Philica said, we're going to be doing some holiday side dishes. So it's almost that time. Can you believe it? Thanksgiving is right around the corner, Christmas, um, and any type of family celebration that you have coming up. Um, these side dishes are always a hit. Um, one of the dishes is in my cookbook, the Living Full Cookbook, which I'll tell you more about in the end, but let's get started. Um, I started with four cups of water, and I have it here in my nonstick stock, uh, stock pot, and it's, it's about boiling temperature right now. Um, and the first dish we're going to prepare is the cranberry pear sauce. So this one I make every year with my family. And what's fun about it is that it comes together fairly quickly. And this is one of those dishes you could make the night before, even two nights before. And it's still gonna be just as good because it needs time to cool, chill and put in the refrigerator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with 12 ounces of cranberries. And so if you go to the grocery store, you pr they pretty much sell them in 12 ounce packages. This is Ocean Spray Cranberries. And I'm going to put them in my boiling water and we're going to cook them for about six minutes or so. You want to rinse them. You want to remove any uh, rotted cranberries. Usually I don't see any rotted ones, but any discolored ones, kind of like beans, you just want to sort them and go through them. I'll just dump that in. Just didn't want to splash myself. Okay. So we're going to simmer these on medium heat for about six minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on six minutes. Um, and while that is going, Cranberries are really easy to cook. All you're waiting for is for them to burst. Um, and they're not going to turn to mush or fall apart. They hold their shape pretty well. So we're gonna let that go for six minutes and just, I'll walk you through the rest of the ingredients that we have for this recipe. So what we're going to also add are two Bartlett pears. Um, Bartlett pears are pretty easy to find, especially now in the winter months. Um, I like to shop organic or shop my local farmer's market. You can find Bartlett pears, they're the bright green ones, and you can tell that they're about ripe when they start to turn brown. You don't want to get ones that are too ripe because they're going to cook and you don't want them to get too mushy and soft. So you want to get some firm Bartlett pears and what I did was I chopped these up, I peeled it actually, and then I chopped it up and I made them about cube size. So I will show you in my hand. It's about that size, about bite size, nothing too big. And I am gonna add these to the cranberry once it's all done cooking. Um, and then I'm going to add them, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna add my sugar and my pectin together which I can do that now. Um, this recipe calls for a half a cup of sugar. This is pure cane sugar. And I also use pectin. You can find pectin at your grocery store, um, either ball, the brand ball pectin for canning jammies, usually in that aisle, or you can find, um, I believe this is Pomona's. I say Pomona's universal pectin. And these are really cool. Um, you can find these at the Sprouts or far farmer's market stores. 
Um, and this pectin is great. It works like a gelatin. It'll make your sauce hold together really well. So it's not like a loose pie filling. Um, and it works great with sugar. It's a compound. So it'll just cling together and make a really good, um, a really good sauce. And we have one navel orange. We're gonna use the zest off of this guy. It's gonna really kick up the flavors with the cranberry and balance out the sugar. So I really love navel oranges. And we also have apple juice. As a matter of fact, what we're going to do is turn on our apple juice. This is two cups and I like to use apple juice, not from concentrate, that's simply, um, I think it just, you don't need all the extra sugar because we're adding sugar to this. So I like to keep things on a relatively low scale on the sugar, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and add it to here. And we're just gonna let that boil. Okay, so while that's going, we're gonna see how our cranberries are doing. And they actually look really good. We have about three minutes on there and I'm just going to take my slotted spoon and I'm gonna stir it around. It looks really pretty. I'm gonna have my assistant come over and give me some fresh water, four cups of water. Because while we were having some technical difficulties, I had gotten excited and put my cranberries in the water and they're supposed to go in the apple cider. So I just had a little moment there. <laughs> Maybe because I'm too excited, I think that's why. So if you have a slotted spoon, you're watching or cooking live with me, I apologize, you guys, the cranberries can go in water, but I like to put them in the apple cider. And that's what I meant to do first. My boiling water is for my second dish. And I really apologize, you guys. This is something that I was getting excited about to do. I also use these cranberries to make a really good sage tea. If you caught the cooking demonstration last time in September, it was so good. We boiled some sage leaves and we just added these cranberries in and they were so good. And that sage tea you can make even now for the holidays. If you didn't watch it, I believe it was September 22nd. Um, I believe it's on the YouTube page with Purdue, um, the NAECC website, and you can go back and check it out if you missed it last time. So the good news is our cranberries are more than halfway done, and that's what we want, but we need to get it in that apple juice and finish it off in that. So we're just going to turn this one off. All right, and we're going to dump this one, put four cups of fresh water in there for me, please. Now we're good to go. Okay, guys, turning it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and combine our sugar with our pectin. We're gonna go ahead and mix that. And the reason why we're putting our pectin in with our sugar right away is because um, that pectin will clump. Once you put it in your liquid, you wanna add it with your sugar and then put them in together. All right, here we go. So I'm just combining. And I don't know if you can hear me, Felica, but is the students, are they watching? Are they participating this time? Or how, how is everybody doing? We may not have the students today, I'm not sure. Uh, but we appreciate you all watching. And... Okay, I heard a mic. Yeah, there we go, we're here. We're just we, we were uh, getting stuff uh, started here, but yeah, I have I have a student here with me, and we're oh, great. We're slowly getting started here. The the pan is uh, still kind of boiling the, the water, but yeah, so we're we're following along. We can hear you. Okay, good. So I don't know if you caught that, but the water is for the green beans, and then the apple cider or the apple juice is for the cranberry. I just transferred okay. them. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure you guys are okay on that. I was okay, too excited. Yeah. I jumped the gun on that one. I'm really that's sorry. Okay, that's okay. Our apple juice is boiling right now. Good, good. I had a human moment. So, okay. Add your cranberries. If your apple cider is boiling, go ahead and toss your cranberries in. Okay. It's and give them about five, six minutes until they begin to burst. Yeah. Let me see. It's not even warm. Am I doing the right one? I think you are. I'm trying okay. to. Okay. So. All right, I'm going to give these cranberries a good stir. 
And like I said before, they are starting to burst, and that's what we want. We want them to burst. Rebecca, do you know what? And I'll let, since your cranberries are still cooking, Felica, can you let me know when they start to burst and we can add the pears together? It really doesn't take a long time, honestly. It's like five or six minutes. So I'm getting four cups of water back on my stock pot here because that's going to be for the green beans. We're kind of doing two things at once today. Um, and that's okay. Normally I focus on one thing, but today we're doing two things. We're multitasking, but isn't that how it is during the holidays? That's what we do. We just multitask, we get things going and that's okay. Um, all right, so my cranberries are ready and I'm going to add my pears to the cranberries. All right, Philippa, are you all good? Maybe a little hard with the mic because of the technical issues that they were having, which is not a problem. You know, we just roll with it, it's okay. All right, y'all, so I have my pears in here and they look lovely, by the way. We're gonna cook them for additional five, six minutes or so just to soften up. And this is really all the cooking that you do for this cranberry sauce. It's just a matter of cooking down the cranberry, getting those uh, pears nice and soft. And then we're just going to put it all together because the sugar, the, the juice, everything does its thing and it'll gel once it cools. So after combining my pectin and my sugar, I'm going to drop this in as well. And we want to get this to nearly a rolling boil. So we wanna increase the temperature so that the compounds and the pectin and the sugar just begin to go to work for us. Um, and then I'm gonna take my navel orange and I'm gonna to start to zest this guy. And when I say zest, this is kind of like a very fine uh, cheese grater. I love this. Um, you wanna be careful though, because it is very sharp. Um, even just touching it is very sharp. You want to watch out for your knuckles when you use this. You can use this for garlic. You can use this for zesting lemons, limes, um, and oranges. So you get and extract some of the rind and some of the oils that are in the rind um, without taking it off. So I'm just going to zest this whole thing. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I like to do is I like to hold the fruit in one hand and the zester in the other, and then I just go to work on it. I just gently rub it. it, smells really good. You can start to smell the zest of the orange. And if you look closely, there it is, it's collecting. And it sticks, it's not gonna fall out or fall through. So I have no problem just using this over my countertop because I'm not gonna lose it really. Let's keep going. Just slowly rotate that orange. So I missed you all so much. The last time we were together was back in September at the end of the month. And we had made protein quinoa bowls, power bowls. And we talked about prepping and uh, shopping at your local farmer's market and preparing your own make ahead meals. And now we're already in November. It's amazing how fast time goes by. So I collected quite a bit. So I went all around, you can see it's a bit spotty, but that's okay. We're not trying to clean it. And that is our orange zest. So I would say this is equivalent to about maybe two to three teaspoons. And we're just gonna add that to our cranberry. You could just tap it like this. That's what I love about it. Okay. So I'm gonna give it a good stir here. That pectin and that sugar is starting to boil. So I also do canning, I do jamming. And so what I love about pectin is that it's kind of like a science. Um, ones like this don't require a lot of sugar. There are low sugar pectins and there are regular pectin um, that you could find at the grocery store. I like to use the low sugar pectin because the more sugar you use, the more it becomes like a gel. And so this one is a natural pectin and you don't need to have um, 
all the sugar. We only used a half a cup. So I enjoy using pectin when it comes to making jams and sauces. That's really all I use it for. And I love this pot too, by the way. Um, making cranberry sauce, you are gonna get a layer uh, because of the sugaring and the, or the sugar and the, the gel, the gelling of the sauce. You wanna have something that's non-stick. And so this is a ceramic pot. It cooks really well, it holds in the heat really well. So I really enjoy uh, using this when I cook uh, my sauces and gravies. All right, so we have, let's spend a minute on that. All right, so now it's just a matter, you guys, of getting this into a casserole dish. This is my casserole dish. You want something that's flat so that your uh, cranberry sauce can cool better versus a hollow uh, bowl. And all you wanna do is transfer this in. So this is about ready. You give it, find you a good spoon, it has no holes. And you might hear some of those cranberries pop, and that's good. It's only gonna continue to pop. And we're just going to add this beautiful cranberry and all its contents to the casserole dish. All right. And I'm gonna show you guys what it will look like when it is all said and done. When it's nice and cold, I can stop that. Turn a quick question. Yes, question. Um, how much uh, of the orange do you zest? Do you just because we're we're just we're just we're zesting here, so we just need to do, do you have a, a, a certain amount. Yeah, I just go all the way around. Really, okay. I mean, it's not you're not cleaning off the orange, but you want to get at least a teaspoon to two teaspoons worth. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so I'm transferring this. I'm going to take my pot holders. And go ahead and pour the rest in. Let's see. And this smells so good. It'll make the house smell so good. You just pour it right in, and it's very much in its liquid state. And that's okay because it's going to cool. And as it cools, it's going to set. And all you do is top it off with either pecans or walnuts. And I just like to put that right across the top or all over the top. You don't need to push it in, it'll sink in some. And these are chopped walnuts. Now, when I made this, when I prepped it the first time, I did it with pecans. And y'all, it's so good with pecans, it works. You can use your favorite nuts. Honestly, I think this will go good with sliced almonds as well. But let me just come in close and show you all how beautiful this looks. It's very much still steaming, but you can see the chunks of the pears, the cranberry, and honestly, if you really want this to be like a gel or like a jam kind of sauce, you could blend it up before you put it in your casserole dish. But I like the texture of it and I think it's just very beautiful. So I just wanted to show that to you. And let me show you what the finished product will look like. Okay. This is one that has completely set. So I can tip it and it's not gonna come out. It has become like a sauce, like a gel. Um, and it's beautiful. You can see all the color, the, that rich orange color. We didn't add any color to it. That's all natural uh, color from the cranberries. And the taste is just as good. Um, let me see if I can grab my spoon and show you how it just literally, when you serve this up, you could get like a small scoop, like a cookie scoop, and you can serve it right up just like that. You see, it looks almost just like the stuff that comes out of the can, except you made it and you made a lot to share. So that's what it looks like. And you can serve that along with your turkey, your stuffing, but this makes a really good um, homemade version of cranberry pear sauce. So that's how we make our first dish. Now we're gonna get ready for the second. All right. I have a question, Lisa. Uh, yes. Yes, last week, two weeks ago, we had a, a visitor that was with us from um, the Kenawa Bay up north and upper um, upper Mich Michigan, and he yeah. um, he harvests um, wild rice as well as maple sugar. So wow. I'm not sure about the maple sugar because I know you used you use uh, is it pure cane sugar? But I, I use pure cane, but it's for sure if you want to use maple sugar. Uh, or even honey sugar powder, it'll work. 
Um, okay. As long as you get the pectin that's low sugar or no sugar pectin. Um, if you get regular pectin, the compound is not going to work. So make sure you do low sugar or no sugar pectin. Okay. Does it does it say on here no sugar or low sugar? I, I'm looking at my pet. Yeah, because mine has one gram of sugar. All right, I'll look for that next time then. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Thank but you. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, natural sugar is always going to be the better one. Um, maple, I think, would taste amazing in this. Mm -hmm. um, but you're welcome to use an alternative sweetener if you have no sugar, low sugar pectin. Okay, got it. Thank you. All okay, right, you're welcome. Okay, guys, let's shift gears. We're going to make our fancy green beans, and I call them fancy because we are going to cook down our, I mean, we're going to cook our, our green beans. So they're not coming from a can. Um, and these are wild, these, these are natural, beautiful green beans. They are loose and I got them where I could buy them in bulk, they are organic. And they come with these beautiful tails and stems. And so we wanna make sure we cut those off. So it does take a little bit of time, but this is one pound of green beans. And we're going to get ready to cook them in our steaming hot water right now. Um, for just a few minutes. It's not going to take very long, maybe like six minutes or so, but I need to switch out my pans here so I can get ready to cook my pancetta. Just give me one moment here. Hey, sorry. All right. So now let me go ahead and get my green beans. This is one pound of loose green beans. They're so beautiful. And I'm just gonna drop them in the water. We're not gonna boil them long. I'm gonna go set my timer for about five minutes. And I would use the word blanch, but blanching is not the right word because when we blanch something like tomatoes or peaches and we wanna peel off the skin, that's usually like 30 seconds, less than a minute. That's blanching. You put it in the hot water, you take it out and you can peel off the skin. But this isn't blanching. This is, um, we're actually cooking those green beans so they can soften. Um, and then we're just gonna add that to our pancetta mix. So next I'm gonna take the infamous Dutch iron skillet. Um, and this is a, a really nice big skillet. I love cooking with this thing. It is so huge. Um, they retain heat very well. And of course they get better with time because of the seasoning. Um, and so I'm gonna put this on medium heat. And I'm gonna get my pancetta. And what pancetta is, it, they sell them as a uh, dry aged. This is a slow roasted pancetta and it's basically bacon. Um, it comes from the cut of the underbelly. And I think it's really good. If you don't have a uh, pancetta, you can use bacon. Use a thick cut sliced bacon, cut it up, cube it really small. This is gonna be about four ounces. So it's not a whole lot, but it does have a lot of flavor. And this is what is gonna provide um, just that flavor bomb for the green beans. And we're going to saute these up with some shallots. I have a shallot that I cut up and it's hard to find these actually. They're not usually where the onions are. It is in the onion family along with leeks. Um, and onions, it's like a cousin, um, but it's really small. They look brown, they look like this. And I found mine in the tomato, where the tomatoes are. So if you're looking for these, you can't find them, look out where, maybe where the tomatoes are, <laughs> but depends on your grocery store. Um, and they're really small. All I did was take off the skin and I peeled them and I cut it in half. Oh, it's also a relative to the garlic. So it kind of has that same bulb look. And this is what it looks like. Once it's peeled, it's actually purple. And it looks really gorgeous and pretty. Just want to show you. This won't burn your eyes. This is just going to add more flavor um, and texture to our green beans. So I am going to, we chopped it up and I'm going to add this along with my pancetta. And I'm going to cook it in my skillet for just a couple of minutes. Let me get my olive oil. How are we doing over there? And we just need about a tablespoon of olive oil. We don't need a whole lot. I just wanna make sure we're okay. Uh, Felica, how are you guys doing with your cranberry sauce? Were you able to transfer it into the casserole dish okay? 
I don't want to skip ahead too fast. <laughs> no, go ahead. Keep on going. We're, 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 okay. we're, talking, we're coming along slowly, but yes, we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so now um, I say a few tablespoons, but that's more like a, ta a few teaspoons equals a tablespoon. So I'm just putting about a tablespoon's worth of olive oil. And I'm going to put in my shallots. You don't want your heat to be too high. You don't want to burn those uh, shallots. Your pancetta goes in and you just want to mix it up together. Get a nice brown on it, mix it all up. All right, so I spread it all evenly out in my pan and that's all good to go. All right, so my timer's up for my green beans. I'm gonna check on those and see how they're doing. Let me get my get the tongs here. Oh, it looks so pretty. You know what I love about these green beans is they don't lose their color. You know, I think when you can have a lot of color in your cooking is a sign of something that's good for you. Um, I love it. I think I think the green beans are a great addition to your spread this year if you're having Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving. And these green beans look really good. You want them to be somewhat firm, not too, not too droopy. So you see this one, for example, you have a little bit of droop, so it's bendable and soft. And that's what we want. You don't want it totally, you know, like like mushy and you want this to be somewhat firm. So I'm gonna drop that into my bowl. I'm gonna take it out of the water, all of them. And see how beautiful and gorgeous this color is. I love it, I love it. Anytime you get a chance to grow some vegetables, I think these would be wonderful to have because they can you can dehydrate them, snack on them, use them for salad. You can have them cold, have them hot. I mean, it's it's just beautiful, and especially during the holidays, it's kind of fun to have something that's. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love canned green beans, um, but you know, if you're making your own baby food or if you want to blend and make your own green beans like we are this evening, I think that just makes your, your meal that much more special. And you can acquire some help while you're in the kitchen. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna mix up my pancetta. This looks really good. It's nice and brown. I wish I could bring you in to, to show you what this looks like. Let me turn this off. You see my cameraman is gonna come close and show you what the pancetta looks like. So bring it in. Okay, and just hold it there. That looks good. Can you see that all the bits? Almost looks like corned beef or spam. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But it smells amazing. It has a mixture of that uh, taste or smell of bacon. Bacon and meat. It's, it's really unique, but it smells really good. And so you can see some of the gold bits. And so it looks good. So right now what I'm going to do is add my green beans, okay? So just hold it there. This is where all the flavors start to combine. So I'm just gonna mix this in, fold it in, fold over your pancetta, with get some of those oils. You wanna coat your green beans together. I'm turning down my heat. I don't need it that hot anymore. But this looks so good. And you're just going to let all of those flavors come together. Just keep tossing it, keep tossing it. We want more flavor to coat all those green beans. It just looks so lovely. Now, keep in mind, these, these um, green beans are already cooked now. So we're not trying to cook them. We're just combining the flavors, getting all of that goodness on there from the pancetta and the shallots, okay? So this is coming to an end, you guys. So what we're going to do next is we're going to just let them sit and we're going to add our seasoning. So if you want to add more olive oil, you can. I think it's coated just fine. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of 
garlic powder. And again, we are going to toss. We're just gonna keep tossing. You do get some salt in the pancetta. And I wanna go ahead and add just a little bit. And you wanna add salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. This is kosher salt. And I'm gonna add some pepper. Now the pine nuts are coming. The pine nuts is the cherry on top, if you will. So just keep tossing like this. All right. Looks good. It's you see the seasoning starting to coat your green beans. My heat is on low. I'm not gonna cook it any more than I already have. All right, so I'm just gonna put that on low and now we're going to roast our pine nuts. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna get a nonstick pot for that or a nonstick skillet. Nothing big, just something small. And I'm going to roast the pine nuts. Now pine nuts, I love, I use them. I've been using them a lot this month. So we're celebrating Native American Heritage Month. And, you know, this is just really a great time to share not only our history, our culture, our language that is so rich, but we also share our food. And being from New Mexico, um, pine nuts mean a lot to me, actually, because my grandmother, my grandma Jay Shemassana, uh, lived in an area in Rayma, New Mexico, pretty rural area, mountain terrain. And where she lives is full of lava rocks and brush. Um, and she has nothing but pine trees. And every year, every, every time around August, September, we would go out and we would hunt for pine nuts. It was like searching for gold. So, um, you know, it, it just brings back a lot of memories of her. It's amazing how an ingredient of food, of, you know, even just eating some of the foods um, of, our, of my homeland um, remind me of people and remind me of, of their life and the legacy that they left. And so for me, when I cook, I like to incorporate an ingredient, incorporate some type of flavor or spice or technique that honors um, our elders, that honors our family. And so um, one of those things is pine nuts. And so all I'm gonna do is drop a third cup of pine nuts into the pot here. And I'm going to grab a spoon. Let's see how this thing here. And really, it just takes less than two minutes to brown. And and what I love about pine nuts also are the some of the healing properties, the nuts and the oils, the things that come from the nuts are great for our brain. They're great for our development, our brain. So. I love to use nuts when I cook. I use them in my salads, my sauces, um, anywhere I can incorporate them. I like to add nuts wherever I can. Um, and pine nuts are just that beautiful nut that's so tender and soft and they don't take very long to roast. Now, growing up, we used to cook these shelled um, and you add a little bit of water, a little bit of salt and you can just eat them like sunflower seeds and spit out the shell. Um, but this is easier when we're cooking with them. Um, you can find raw pine nuts that are um, de-shelled, and that's really going to be the easiest. So this is how it looks now. Um, you can see some of the brown pieces. The skin on there is just nice and toasted. So we toasted these pine nuts really nicely. This is going to be our topping for our green beans. So I hear it sizzling behind me. We're going to get ready to plate that. And let me go ahead and get my casserole dish. So I like to host um, during Thanksgiving and even Christmas. Um, all of my family, we get together, we create this huge menu and we all divvy up the work, which I appreciate. Um, not one person is left with the whole entire job of cooking. But I usually, um, we like to, my sisters and I, we all break up the side dishes. And so every year, usually I come with a vegetable and I make my cranberry sauce. So I'm so honored that I get to make this for you guys. Um, I think this is gonna be a nice treat for you, Felica, and your team there, your students who are cooking with you. So all we have to do is transfer our green beans. And don't worry about the pancetta if it falls through, we will get that and spoon it over. But again, oh, this smells so good. <laughs> These green beans, 
are just going to be layered. I think they're really pretty when you can stack them. Um, find you a nice uh, deep casserole dish. Ones that are smaller. That way you can have a nice variety. All right, so get my spoon here and I'm going to scoop in my pancetta. And this is so pretty. And those bits, they just season your iron skillet even more. So when you make your next dish, you'll have some of those bits on the bottom to cook with and enjoy. If you're making steak or chicken, so well, that's what I love about an iron skillet. All right, look at this. This is so pretty. Honey, wanna come close to this one? I have my husband helping me out this evening. This is the pancetta with green beans. You see how pretty that is? And we just added all of the little bits on top, the, the shallots, on top of the green beans, you can see they're nice and shiny and coated with all that flavor. And then all we're going to do is take our pine nuts and we're just going to scoop it on top. Now you can have this on the side. I don't know if anybody, you know, someone in your family may have an allergy, I don't know, but you can just serve this on the side or you can just put it on top just like that. You can put the whole thing in, you can toss it, but I think that looks really good. Um, so there you have it. That is our green, fancy green beans with pancetta and also our cranberry sauce. And it's already starting to gel. So you want this to cool. Don't stick it in your refrigerator right away. Um, you know, with time temperature control foods, you want to be careful and make sure that you just let it cool, let that temperature come down. Once it's soft to touch and cool, then you can put it in your fridge. Um, and honestly, it's a wrap. All of these you can make ahead of time. Um, if you want to reheat this, I wouldn't recommend putting the pine nuts on it. I would roast your pine nuts right before you're ready to serve it. You saw it took less than a minute, two minutes. Um, and the green beans, you know, they're nice and soft. You could always reheat them in your oven with a pancetta. Um, but yeah, this is our holiday edition. Um, and I'm just happy to celebrate with you guys, Native American Heritage Month, um, sharing our stories, our talent. Um, my love for food and family, of course, is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and I started Living Full Company last year. I started writing a cookbook um, and I started to share in my cookbook um, some recipes. So not only uh, are not only do I have family friend, friendly recipes, but I have some traditional recipes in here as well. I'm very proud of um, my culture, my family, um, some of the family recipes that were passed down to me. And um, I just consider it an honor to be able to share this entire month. Um, and I have a cookbook a toolbox section, excuse me, at the beginning of this cookbook. Now, let me tell you about the toolbox really quick. Um, the toolbox includes um, some brand names of foods that I keep in my kitchen, things that are low in sugar, non-GMO, natural good products, tried and true products that I use for these recipes. I have a section on setting the table. For some of us, you know, that may be something new that you've never done before, or maybe you have done it. But I share it because I feel like that's important. That's some knowledge that I can share and pass on um, and just share the importance of spending time together as a family because studies do show when we gather in a in, a, in the same place, be it a kitchen or dining table, um, families are healthier and happier. They have a sense of belonging. They, they feel safe, they feel secure. So think about that when you're preparing your meals and the frequency of the meals over time is as, as you begin to do it more and more, um, studies do show that families and especially those with young people and children um, have better grades in school, better attitude towards school, better relationships with their siblings and their parents. So this is something we need for our Native people, our Native communities. Um, I hope that you can support this cause and this effort because this is a message that I'm sharing um, more than just the meals, but the importance and value of family meals and keeping our families strong. And of course, for our future generations, um, future generations to come. So we want to continue to be here and be healthy um, and just have good food. So um, there you have it, cranberry pear sauce and fancy green beans with pancetta and pine nuts.
Good. Well, thank you so much. Yes, the cranberry sauce was wonderful. We all got a thumbs up here. I think we all enjoyed it. <laughs> Um, I just have a quick question for you. <clears throat> As you were talking about the, the pine nuts and, um, you know, talking about the connection to your home community, are there other type of natural plants that you would be able to cook with, like cedar or uh, anything like that? And oh, what, oh what absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, so, native, so in, in where I am from, where my mom is from, um, a lot of them love to cook. My aunties, my mom, we cook with blue cornmeal. Um, mm -hmm. And that's another thing I would encourage too, if you want to add to your spread, doing a blue cornmeal cornbread, you can add and cook juniper ash. Um, mm -hmm. Cooking with the ash does have nutrients and vitamins and blue corn is really good. It's a tasty ingredient. I wish I could have made it tonight, but it's a tasty ingredient that a lot of pregnant women um, eat because mm -hmm. of the high contents of iron. So there's a lot of benefits there. If you wanted to cook, even when we added the onion powder and the garlic powder, you can add um, dried sage, you can add ash, you can add try it, try, just try even roasting your pine nuts with other, um, with other herbs, dried herbs. I would encourage you to do that and make it your own because this is really just the template um, for you. And even for the recipes in the cookbook, I encourage you to make it your own, incorporate um, your own vegetables and your own up to your life and to your palate. And for sure, for, for native foods, um, I would say if you can incorporate some of your fresh herbs, I think that just makes it even better. Okay, great. And then another question. Um, I know that uh, there are some traditional um, meats that you would cook, you know, like, um, um, you know, like lamb or, or um, um, bison. Is there any, any, any special way, uh, any special recipe that you would recommend for either of those options? Sure. You know, if you wanted to have it as a main dish, you could do a leg of lamb with some herbs with rosemary and you can Pop it in the oven or a crock pot roaster around 400 mm -hmm. degrees. Cook it depending on the weight of your lamb, if it's bone in or bone out. Um, but to cook it to about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can have that um, with your herbs. And what I like to do is I will make a stew with the lamb or you can slice it if it's a leg of lamb. You can even have rack of lamb. And mm -hmm. all when you do rack of lamb, you just saute it. Like what I would do now if I had time we could saute some rack of lamb on here for six to seven minutes. Um, and we could just serve that, you know, with some of these vegetables. Um, and if you want to incorporate lamb with, with your vegetables, you can do that. You can cut it up and put it in. But I would say serving it up as a main dish with this would be really good. Um, I just made a bison bacon chili last week, and that was amazing. Bison is very lean. Um, leaner than beef and it cooks very well. If you even wanted to incorporate bison instead of pancetta, um, you could do that. You would just need to add a little bit more oil um, just so that you can get all those flavors together. But having fun with it and making it your own, like I said, is really, you know, you, you can't go wrong. Um, you can definitely cook with lamb or cook with bison when you're making um, this, green, this green bean dish or having it as a main entree. Okay, great. And one last question: any yes. special, um, any special uh, recipe for uh, incorporating the three sisters? Oh my! So bean corn squash. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to do something cold, or you want to do it hot, um, it's really a, it's really up to you. But for the squash, I like to saute. Um, I have a recipe in here for um, acorn squash bowls. And so I cut that in half, I roast it, and I cook it with the cream and a spice seasoning. So um, I tend to cook them kind of separate. Um, I like to cook squash, whole squash. Um, my mom actually makes a really good squash and bean um, recipe uh, for breakfast. And she just sautes it with salt and pepper and olive oil. So really simple. But uh, if you wanted to cook those, you can cool, you know, have it cool. You can put it on, you can have it cold. I have recipes in here for salad dressings and you can drizzle your salad dressing on it and have it cold. You could even have it cold with green beans, um, the three sisters with green beans. And you can cook the green beans just the same way and serve it cold. Okay, great. And I did get a, I did get a text message asking if, <laughs> about the recipe. And uh, I know last time you were very generous in providing us with these two recipes. And yes. If you're able to do that, we will definitely share with all the participants that are on here. Yes, um, 
Absolutely. Just uh, email Deb Swihart or in, email our NACC. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, we didn't do a, did we do a pre-registration for this or not? I can't remember, Deb. No, we did not. Okay, so just email us at uh, the email address I posted here, nacc at purdue.edu or Deb Swihart. And what we'll do is we will email you the, um, oh, we will email you. <laughs> <laughs> our lights just went down. Oh, dear. I need that. Um, yeah, just uh, e email uh, either the two email addresses there, and we will share the recipe with you, um, the uh, the two items that you have here, and we'll also share information about your book. But the, but that's basically it. I do appreciate it. You're coming and joining us. Um, we, we've Thank learned a lot, and the Power Bowl and, that you made for us last time was a big hit, and this <laughs> is also another really big hit with our... Um, coming up into the holidays, let me see. Absolutely, awesome. Oh, and yeah. that's, uh, thank you, thank you so much for giving me this platform to share and to help to encourage, to bring people together. And uh, the Living Soul Company is you know, growing. And of course we have the cookbooks in coil bound hardcover. Hardcovers are gonna be available at the beginning of the month, first week of December. Um, and then the coil bounds are available now. So if you go to the website, livingfullcookbook.com, you'll find the coil bound copies. And of course we have the e-version. So some of us like to use our tablets in the kitchen and that will be downloadable, you know, right away. Um, mm -hmm. And that's also on the website. So you just choose your format um, and we'll have some kitchen towels, rolling pins, charcuterie boards. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff soap and uh, handmade items that are going to be available for the holidays. So look out for that. Okay, I think I, I just now posted, um, I was responding to somebody privately and I think that's where I put in all the NACC and the Deb Swihart. So now they should be listed here uh, publicly, but um, but yeah, thanks again. Uh, if there, does any, maybe we'll give you the last couple, if anybody has any questions, we have a couple of minutes here. Um, feel yeah, free to absolutely. yourself and ask a question if you're available, if you have anything that you'd like to add or share. Yeah, I'm, I'm open. Any questions that you have, sure. And I just want to add that I know that you did a cooking, uh, you did a book signing out in Gallup. We were there at that same time, and I think we just missed you because we were going to go to visit you. Yes. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, my yeah, goodness. We, the, we were there at the same time. Gallup. Yes, I did about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, my I'm sorry. I missed you, Belka. <laughs> oh, no, that's I mean, we were we were busy. We were trying to we were I remember going trying to go over to Camille's, but then I think we got caught up in some other stuff but oh uh, hey well, that happens well there will yeah, be next yeah. time i hope we can connect and maybe i can come to where you are yeah because you and then you also did a book signing at unm is that what it was I I went to UNM, yes because the book is available we wanted to make it available to the community so i um connected with the zollinger zollinger library the university of new mexico their, their campus has some copies as well as the octavia Bellum public library i did a cooking demonstration with them we made blue corn tea cookies with pine nuts mm -hmm. so again pine nuts um so if you want to find that recipe and uh, i do believe they posted it on their youtube page that's gallup oh, okay. octavia Bellum public library um, and last week we just did a cooking demonstration. We made bison bacon chili with Nike N7, um, their oh Native American God. network. And so that was amazing. Um, so just to be able to share these recipes, I'm, I'm so happy that I get to share it with you this evening. I, and I really do appreciate everyone for following along. Um, and sorry about the beginning with the water and the, you know, we had a little mix up there, but we got back on track. So I'm glad that everything came out well. Yeah, there was no, no big, no big you there but yeah thank you I, I will i will make a note, note that we we plan to purchase a book so we'll have it available in our library as well so oh, that, that's amazing I can come in to use the, the 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 book or the 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 cookbook we'll have it we, we have two other cookbooks currently in our library as well so if there's an wow. interest in stopping by taking a look and um and making photocopies or if you want to use it just let us know or you can come in or see me or deb at the center awesome Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to close out. We're right at seven o'clock. So I do thank yeah. you for joining us here today. And um, we do have a couple more events tomorrow. We will be hosting a, um, a, a what is a painting workshop with uh, Margaret Jacobs from the Idle Drug Museum. If, there, if you'd like more information, go to our website and you can sign up and stop by the center to pick up your supplies. Um, we will be using black 
walnut ink she made herself. So that's exciting. We have a bunch of black walnut ink at the center. But feel free to stop by and pick up your items and uh, join us for tomorrow, our, cook, our, our art demonstration. Okay, good evening. Thank you all for coming. And um, Lisa, as always, we appreciate all your work and let's continue to following you. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Take care. Oh, have a good night. Okay, you did.